When the legendary SR-71 Blackbird ended its service in the U.S. Air Force, many thought that aerial reconnaissance had reached its peak, not even knowing that its successor, the SR-72, would soon appear. This hypersonic drone from Lockheed Martin is designed to embody the most daring technological ideas of the recent decades, becoming a ghost and true nightmare for enemy air defense systems. But can it surpass its great ancestor in all aspects? We've got the answer to this question and more in today's video. If you were asked to name the most memorable U.S. military aircraft, Lockheed's SR-71 Blackbird would probably be at the top. Against such a background, it's strange to realize that its origins partly owe to the incident that occurred in the 1960s with pilot Gary Powers, whose U-2C Dragon Lady was shot down by a surface-to-air missile over Soviet territory. After what happened and taking into account the speed of development of radar and missile technologies of its main opponent of those years, the United States realized that in the future, Dragon Lady would be even more vulnerable during reconnaissance missions, which meant it was time for a change. In late 1957, the CIA asked Lockheed to build a new undetectable spy plane codenamed Archangel, a nod to an earlier U-2 program called Angel. Kelly Johnson, head of Lockheed's Secretive Skunk Works Division in Burbank, California, took the reins of the project. The goal was very straightforward, to fly faster and higher than the U-2. Stealth, of course, was also not discounted by anyone over there. Moreover, after a meeting with the CIA in March of 1959, the aircraft prototype was changed to reduce its radar cross-section by 90%. During the development of the device, only the first letter and the number 12 were left from the name Archangel, indicating the number of the version chosen by the command in the chain of designs proposed by Skunk Works. This is how the A-12 was born. This rebranding not only corresponded to the traditions of the military nomenclature, but also greatly reduced the excessive attention towards U.S. aircraft on the part of foreign spies. However, even before the A-12 entered service, its intended purpose of replacing the U-2 and flights over the USSR and Cuba became extremely unlikely. By that time, Soviet radar systems increased their blip-to-scan ratios, which left the A-12 vulnerable. And by 1965, satellite photo reconnaissance programs had reached such an extent that flights over Soviet territory were no longer necessary for the effective collection of strategic and intelligence information. Despite the fact that all 13 A-12 spy planes were retired in 1968, they still managed to fly over North Korea and demonstrate their capabilities during Operation Black Shield at speeds of about Mach 3.1 and an altitude of 80,000 feet over North Vietnam, photographing surface-to-air missile sites. But even before the A-12 was retired, the SR-71 Blackbird was already hot on its ancestors' heels. In November of 1967, both reconnaissance aircraft flew three identical routes along the Mississippi River, approximately one hour apart, with data collection systems turned on. And although the A-12's camera had a wider field of view, the SR-71 collected types of intelligence that the former could not, and in better quality. Additionally, while the A-12 was designed to optionally use one of three different types of high-definition cameras, the SR-71 had simultaneous photography and signals intelligence capabilities. Overall, the Blackbird was more versatile, had a two-seat cockpit versus the A-12 single, offered more fuel capacity, and was designed for everyday use, while the A-12 was a stealthy craft that was used only on special occasions. After the SR-71 entered service in 1966, it began to break literally every possible record. From 1976 to this day, it's been and remains the fastest jet aircraft in the world thanks to its impressive cruising speed of Mach 3.3, not to mention the records for highest sustained flight and also the fastest flight time between London and New York, these being set during two separate flights in 1974. Since the beginning of Blackbird reconnaissance missions over North Vietnam and Laos in 1968, Reconnaissance missions have averaged one mission per week for nearly two years. By 1970, they switched to two flights per week, and in 1972, they were carrying out one flight every day. 
Such dense service led to the fact that during the Vietnam War, the North Vietnamese fired about 800 air defense systems at the SR-71, none of which reached their target. The total number of missiles that Blackbird dodged during its service exceeded 4,000. Yes, this plane could literally fly away from missiles when one put the pedal to the floor, per se. Due to the high cost of production and maintenance, the U.S. Air Force proposed to Congress that the Blackbird be retired in 1989. Many Blackbird fans are still convinced that a certain part of the military and congressional detractors who lack knowledge about the SR-71 and any understanding of the nature of aerial reconnaissance were to blame for the departure of the legend, which is why they were extremely negative towards SR-71 by the early 1980s and regularly operated with fictitious amounts of $400 to $700 million per year to support the aircraft and $85,000 for the cost of one flight hour. The only one to operate the last two airworthy Blackbirds after the 1990s was NASA. The rest of the legendary scouts were placed in museums. Time passed, and there were still no worthy successors to Blackbird on the horizon. Of course, the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II fighters, which came out of the Lockheed machine, are the real rock stars of their generations, but they and the reconnaissance aircraft had two different tasks. Lockheed Martin first announced the SR-72 publicly in 2013, announcing that the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird, or as it was later called, the Son of Blackbird, would be the same size as its legendary ancestor, but could fly with hypersonic speed up to Mach 6. Naturally, such statements blew the minds of the media and aviation fans. After all, previously only the experimental North American X-15 could boast such speeds. Many figured that Lockheed had just been talking specifically about the aircraft, but in fact, they were describing the future device as a platform for intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance (ISR). Few could have imagined that the aircraft would turn out to be a hypersonic UAV. The main task for Skunk Works engineers, as expected, was the development of engines for the future drone. After all, it had to cover several flight modes at once – subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. To achieve design speeds by the time of publication in 2013, the team had already been working closely with Aerojet Rocketdyne for more than seven years to develop a method for integrating a ready-made turbine with a hypersonic ramjet engine scramjet, to propel the aircraft from standstill to those cherished speeds of Mach 6 and higher. The future drone's engine began with a conventional Pratt & Whitney F-100 and General Electric F-110 turbofan engine as the basis. This helped the device take off from a standstill and accelerate to supersonic speeds like a regular fighter. But as soon as the figure got to about Mach 3, the second part of the engine came into play. It's rumored to be a dual-mode ramjet engine that uses the enormous pressure of incoming air at supersonic speeds and a variable air intake design to create deliberately directed shock waves for compression. As a result, such a solution will help the aircraft not only surpass its legendary ancestor Blackbird, but also move even higher than the hypersonic barrier of Mach 5 set for the Skunk Works team. The second challenge for Son of Blackbird will almost certainly be extreme temperatures. Therefore, specialists will have to make sure that the insane speed coupled with the heat doesn't turn the glider into hot jelly. The team will definitely benefit from using composites, high-performance mixtures of carbon, ceramics, and metals in its design, especially for critical UAV components. For comparison, a typical steel hull will begin to melt at 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the SR-72 will need to withstand at temperatures of 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit or higher to survive successfully. After the United States became the world leader in hypersonic technology thanks to NASA's X-43 and Boeing's X-51 programs, it shifted its focus from these advanced systems to combating the global terror threat for several decades. In 2017, Lockheed Martin Executive Vice President and Skunk Works CEO Rob Weiss told the media that hypersonic propulsion testing for the SR-72 had been completed and the team was now approaching the start of work on the SR-72 Flight Research Vehicle FRV, a technology prototype the size of an F-22 Raptor, about 60 feet, with a single engine capable of flying at Mach 6 for several minutes. Just one year later, Lockheed Vice President Jack O'Banion shed a little more light on the company's achievements in the field of additive manufacturing and computer modeling, 
saying that building such a device in the early 2010s would have been simply impossible, and 3D printing allowed the company to even integrate the system cooling to the engine. In March of 2018, the Russian president announced the start of an unofficial hypersonic arms race, introducing the X-47M2 Kenzal hypersonic missiles. After this, even mention of the SR-72 program disappeared from the official Lockheed Martin resources. It's as if all the efforts in partnership with Aerojet Rocketdyne were put on hold. However, representatives from Lockheed and the U.S. Air Force have repeatedly mentioned the use of new hypersonic vehicles, including the SR-72, as hypersonic missile launch platforms. While releasing or launching hypersonic missiles in high-speed flight poses a string of engineering challenges due to the enormous pressure and heat, Lockheed Martin has already proven the viability of successfully launching air-to-air -air missiles at speeds greater than Mach 3 using YF-12 prototype interceptors. At a certain point, the SR-72 seemingly died out as far as the public eye was concerned, but in 2021, Air Force's Profession of Arms Center of Excellence released a video of a single-engine flight research aircraft that closely resembles renderings previously shown by Lockheed. And just a year later, the sequel to the acclaimed film Top Gun Maverick was released in cinemas where viewers were shown a certain Dark Star, a hypersonic aircraft created by none other than the Skunk Works engineers. And apparently they succeeded in making it look like a real aircraft. It's unlikely that the filmmakers managed to accelerate to Mach 10, but the film's producer, either jokingly or seriously, stated that the U.S. Navy noted the Chinese satellite's interest in the device. To do this, he even had to change his route to photograph Dark Star. Although, who knows, maybe the PRC military just has American film fans among their ranks. One way or another, in recent interviews, the first flight of the SR-72 prototype was scheduled for 2025, and the aircraft itself may enter service as early as 2030. Considering that in the early 1930s, the U.S. Air Force planned to introduce the sixth-generation NGAD fighter into service, one can only hope that the budget will withstand the pressure from two Iron Birds at once, coupled with the new B-21 Raider bombers and hundreds of collaborative combat aircraft drones, these being developed as future representatives of the U.S. Air Force fleet. What do you think? Will the successor to the SR-71 Blackbird emerge from the shadows by the 2030s? Or are we not destined to see the latest UAV until 2040? Let us know your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.